Imagine a skyscraper so tall it disappears into the clouds. Not 500 meters, not even 800 meters like the Burj Khalifa, but one full kilometer into the sky. This is the Jeddah Tower, Saudi Arabia's audacious attempt to break every record in human construction. It is enormous, it is audacious, and it's happening right now. Picture this, 157 stories tall, rising from Arabian desert sands. Roughly 170 to 180 meters taller than the Burj Khalifa. A hundred billion SAR, US $26 billion price tag to complete the remaining works. But can it reach its full kilometer goal into the sky? Project Overview Tall towers and buildings that scrape the sky as high as the eyes can see are not strange on Saudi Arabian soil. If anything, tall towers are a big part of Saudi Arabia's modern identity and development vision. The country has embraced super tall skyscrapers as symbols of economic power, cultural pride, and futuristic city planning. There's the Makkah Royal Clock in Mecca, a towering edifice that measures 601 meters, 1,907. Feet. This clock tower is one of the tallest buildings in Saudi Arabia and one of the tallest in the world. There's the Public Investment Fund Tower in Riyadh. This building, standing at 365 meters, 1,263 feet, is the tallest office building in Saudi Arabia and the tallest building in all of Riyadh. There's also the Mukab a 400-meter-tall cube-shaped skyscraper under construction in the al Kirawan district of Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. However, come 2028, these buildings will be usurped by one tower upon its completion. The new muse, the Jeddah Tower, also known as Burj Jeddah, or the Kingdom Tower. How did it all start? Rising on the shores of the Red Sea on the north side of Jeddah, the Jeddah Tower is the centerpiece of the Jeddah Economic City Project. This skyscraper, planned to be the world's first one kilometer tall, 3,281 foot building, would be the world's tallest building or structure and the crown jewel of the $20 billion Kingdom City development. Construction resumed in early 2025. While work is underway, completing a project of this magnitude remains a multi-year effort. But how did it start? The decision to build the Jeddah Tower was spurred by Saudi Arabia's ambition to symbolize its economic transformation and modernization. This forms a key part of the broader Saudi Vision 2030 initiative, directed towards diversifying the kingdom's economy away from oil dependence and boosting sectors like real estate, tourism, and technology. To create a building such as this one, Saudi billionaire Prince Al-Walid bin Tatal who was leading the project, formed an alliance with architect Adrian Smith, who designed the Burj Khalifa. The plan was simple at first, to create a statement by building a skyscraper that is over one kilometer tall. To many, this project was intended to surpass the Burj Khalifa. However, one thing was certain. A tower this tall would be a statement of Saudi Arabia's future ambitions and capabilities. The tower's design. The building was designed to a height of at least 1,008.2 meters, 3,308 feet. It would be set on a 50-hectare, 120-acre plot, surrounded by buildings. This was intended to be the first phase of a three-phase Jeddah Economic City development. And what exactly is this project? Well, the three-phase Jeddah Economic City development was proposed for a large area of undeveloped waterfront land with an area of 5.2 square kilometers, 2 square miles. This area is located about 20 kilometers, 12 miles north of the port city of Jeddah. The development is set to include residential, commercial, and mixed-use spaces designed to create a modern city hub. And the Jeddah Tower is only the beginning. But what exactly would this tower look like? The Jeddah Tower's design features a three-winged, aerodynamic, Y-shaped profile with a hexagonal buttressed core to withstand wind loads at extreme heights and a tapered form that reduces heat gain. This unique shape consists of three wings separated by 120 degrees, allowing for greater stability and expansive views without compromising privacy. 
At heights such as this, the tower requires stability to minimize swaying and ensure the safety of all occupants. From the ground up, the Jetta Tower is built for optimal stability. The foundation uses hundreds of reinforced concrete piles. These piles are driven more than 100 meters into the ground to reach stable bedrock with shallower depths under the wings. The Jetta Tower's foundation is similar to that of the Burj Khalifa, but larger. The foundation is expected to average around 4.5 meters, 15 feet deep, with a concrete pad of an area of around 7,500 square meters, 81,000 square feet. The concrete used will have low permeability to keep out corrosive salt water from the Red Sea. The rock strata are mixed with materials such as limestone and sand and require careful engineering to manage settlement. The design calls for enormous quantities of steel and concrete, though exact final numbers may vary. The foundation will be built to stabilize the building, which will weigh over 900,000 tons, 890,000 long tons, 990,000 short tons. A later plan for the foundation, to be completed by Bauer in 2013, called for 270 drilled piles up to 110 meters, 360 feet deep which have to be inserted into the tough ground conditions. The tower's form will taper elegantly as it transcends in an aerodynamic shape designed to minimize vortex shedding and reduce oscillations caused by high coastal winds. With a shape that reduces wind forces to help it withstand intense gusts in the coastal city of Jeddah, the tower is built for occupant comfort at extreme heights. This tapering also maximizes usable interior space while maintaining an incredible height to width ratio. At the very top, the tower soars beyond a thousand meters. It features a massive spire that houses tuned mass dampers to stabilize the building against wind and seismic activity. Just below the spire is the world's highest observation deck, located well above 500 meters, one of the highest ever planned. This observation deck will offer breathtaking panoramic views of the fully developed area. The exact measurements of these structures are still subject to final design confirmation. The tower's exterior cladding features high-performance glass and aluminum panels designed to reflect solar radiation and reduce heat transmission. These features also provide exceptional views and daylighting. Structural steel and reinforced concrete work together in a composite system, ensuring both strength and flexibility to withstand seismic forces and thermal expansion over the tower's height. Inside, the tower will be equipped with a large number of elevators. These elevators will be designed to be efficient vertical transport systems to serve the tower, though some exact counts and specs are still being finalized. As for its internal systems, Chicago-based Environmental Systems Design Inc. will provide mechanical, plumbing, electrical, and fire protection engineering. In the tower, there will also be teledata, audiovisual, security systems, and acoustics. The tower's design also integrates sustainable features such as energy recovery ventilation, water-saving plumbing, and potential for solar energy harvesting on the facade and rooftop areas. According to the design plan, Langen International will be responsible for geotechnical engineering and certain ground-level site work such as transportation engineering and parking. In the tower's design, there's a proposed space for a 3,000 to 4,700 car underground parking garage. This parking garage will be located near, but not under, the tower to prevent terrorism. Key parts of the tower design are created by different companies to ensure efficiency in every detail, no matter how minor. For example, besides handling transportation engineering, Langen International also designed the tower's foundation to ensure it'll be able to support the tower despite the less optimal subsurface conditions, such as soft rock and permeable coral. These architectural contributions and innovations create a tower that is not only the world's tallest, but engineered to thrive in challenging environmental conditions while redefining vertical living in workspaces. The Tower's Surroundings
The Jetta Tower is designed to be a mixed-use skyscraper. It'll contain a combination of residential, commercial, and recreational spaces. The tower will house a luxury Four Seasons Hotel, Four Seasons Short Rental Apartments, Class A office space, and luxury condominiums. In addition, it'll contain other unique amenities that'll enable it to function as a self-sustaining vertical city, including retail areas and restaurants. There will be public spaces that dedicated zones for offices, and dedicated residential areas, all connected by multiple sky lobbies for efficient vertical transportation. The 23 hectares 57 acres, area surrounding the Jetta Tower will be developed to contain public areas, a shopping mall, and other residential and commercial developments. This area will be known as the Jetta Tower Waterfront District. Not only will the Jetta Tower be a landmark, but the entire Jetta Tower Waterfront District will be a statement and testament to genius architecture in Saudi Arabia. Together, the project will stand as a landmark structure that will greatly increase the value of hundreds of other properties around it in Jetta Economic City and North Jetta as a whole. What this means for Saudi Arabia Currently, there's a growing demand for housing in Saudi Arabia fueled by a shortage of supply due to an increasing population. The tower will serve as the centerpiece of Jeddah Economic City, a major development that aims to attract international investment, tourism, and global talent. Economically, the tower and its surrounding district are expected to dramatically increase land and property values, boosting the local and national real estate market. Additionally, the Jeddah Tower reinforces Saudi Arabia's image as a center for architectural excellence and economic innovation, with plans to house luxury residences, offices, retail, and one of the world's highest observation decks. The project is expected to stimulate infrastructure development create thousands of jobs, and position Jeddah as a global city. Investments exceeding $400 billion in infrastructure across the kingdom will support and complement this megaproject, including a new airport terminal, enhancing connectivity. Construction of the Jeddah Tower started 12 years ago on April 1, 2013. Soil testing commenced in 2008, and work on the foundation was scheduled to begin towards the end of 2012. Back then, the plan was for the tower to be completed in 2017. The architect for the project, Adrian Smith of Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, AS plus GG, was selected in March 2010. Smith was not a random choice, but was selected because they won a design competition between eight leading architects architectural firms, including Cohn Peterson Fox, Pickard Chilton, Pelly Clark Pelly, and Foster and & Partners. Besides the Burj Khalifa, Adrian Smith has designed several other recent towers, including the Xifeng Tower in Nanjing in China, the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago, and the Jinmao Tower in Shanghai. Designs for the foundation were officially in place by early August 2011. On the 16th of the same month, Langan International officially announced their involvement in the construction process. Construction officially started on April 1, 2013. Piling was completed in December 2013, and above-ground construction commenced in September 2014. As of mid-2025, Jetta Tower had reached around its 68th to 70th floor. It's anticipated that the Jetta Tower will be finished in 2028 and open for use in the same year. Beyond its record-breaking height, Jeddah Tower symbolizes Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030, an ambition to transform its cities, economy, and global image. For engineers, architects, and dreamers worldwide, it's a project that pushes the very limits of what humanity can build. So here's the question. If we can reach one kilometer today, how long before humanity reaches two?